Oh guys, oh my goodness, that thing was uh, a little stuck. Or not stuck, but uh, you know what I mean. Must be noon. Well, sorry, a lot of things going on. Anyway, well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms, and today, I am, uh, it's Saturday morning. Just got done repping a little kids basketball tournament, volunteering up there, always fun to do. Now I'm uh, gonna go run the feed cart down to Preston, get it filled up with feed and bring it back to, for the cows in Bellevue. That's the plan at least. I need to, uh, they need feed about at least once a week or so, just depending on the weather. If it's really cold, they need more feed just to keep keep warm, keep that energy up. If it's not as, if it's not as cold, they don't need as much feed. And when there's two feet of snow, they need all the feed because they can't get to the corn that's on the ground. So we're gonna go grab the feed cart and uh, get that thing to Preston. There's the feed cart. We'll back up to her. Pull her home. We'll see how right I was. I think I'm too close. Ah! Not horrible. Oh yeah. Look at that. I am good. I am very good. Hooked up, kick tires, and we'll head down the road. It's our feed cart we got a couple years ago. Works good. For what we use it for again, we have to go to Preston and get feed every once in a while, every week or so. I My goal is to change things up. So the big reason why we go down that we have all the hay here, the big reason we go down is just for cow feed, you know, for what we feed in our ration. I wanna eventually bring some feed up to Bellevue if we had a place. If we had a place to put it, that's the problem right now is we don't have a place to put it. All right, let's roll. 35 mile an hour. We can go about 35, 40 unloaded and about 25, 30 loaded. Quick break in the action, guys, to talk about our newest channel partner, Growers. So guys, you guys, if you're a farmer like me, you always been told, you know, hire out the $20 an hour jobs, focus on the $100 an hour jobs, you know, like figuring out marketing your grain, buying your inputs and preparing for next year's corn crop. Well, how can you make that easier? Well, my friends at Growers are here to help you guys out. And let me tell you a little bit about that. So the Growers app is a free to use app. And the goal of that is to streamline communication to make buying inputs for our farm easier. You can look and shop at different uh, different retailers, retailers in the area and you can send out multiple product requests for on different products like fertilizers, chemicals, et cetera, all at the same time. This app is both free and easy for both us and retailers to use. So if you guys are looking around, you don't see a retailer on there that you guys would like to see, it's pretty easy just to send them a request. Growers makes it easy to search for things like ag lime, fertilizer, AMS, etc and you can request quotes for prices and just because you request it does not mean you have to purchase it so as you guys can see my cart's got some ag lines some fertilizer and some aos in there so it's just pretty interesting just to kind of shop around and take a look so like i said guys it's a really cool app i highly recommend it check out the uh, description in the of this video as well as take a look at this uh, link right here just about down to preston kind of see just got the feed cart taking my sweet old time 12.30, the guys are probably just about to eat. I'm hopefully gonna be able to lead the load myself or have those guys load before they go eat. We shall see. With my Uncle Larry and Aunt Kay back down in Texas, they've been kind of doing all the lunches and farm maintenance and living in the house, making sure everything's been good since grandma's been gone. Well, they're down in Texas for the next couple months to avoid this stupid weather. Stupid as it, I, I don't mind the weather, but it's not for Texans being 15 it is not 15 degrees is it it's minus seven this morning when i got up anyway being uh this cold and two feet of snow on the ground so i guess so because of that i believe ron has been the one making the dinners every day except for sundays so i don't know interested to see what happens there's some snowmobilers yeah that's something that would be a lot of fun to do i did that during high school snowmobiling this would be a fantastic year for it because we actually have snow this year but just don't have the time, nor do I like throwing money away because that's basically what you do when you're on a snowmobile. They are very expensive to run and maintain. Well, she made it. Let's go uh, see how the guys are doing. I've been to the farm in a, eh, about a week or two. Just been so cold, can't really run semis reliably. Well, I'm gonna walk over here, get the feeder wagon we're gonna have to load out of, so. 
you'll see what we're doing but basically we got a feed ration in the feed wagon there and i am gonna hop in there fill up nathan's bucket he'll bring the bucket over to the wagon and fill up that cows you guys are young ones but you're already getting big you kind of see we don't have the building up quite yet but building pad is up Kind of see the ration. I guess I don't know why the feed wagon's parked back here, but it is. Problem with it being this cold is, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, diesel does gel. There's different additives and stuff you can put in there, but the feed or the um, loader tracker is actually in the uh, in the shop right now because it's, uh, it's diesel line is gelled up. When you're, it's mainly actually your filter. When your filter gets gelled up, can't get any power. You really can't do anything with it. Don't get the help of this thing very much. It's been our feed wagon tractor for 25 plus years. Probably not even longer, as long as I can remember. So I'll just sit here, Nathan will pull up. We'll get underneath there. I'll run the PTO that kicks, that runs the mixing augers, kicks it out to the uh, the shoot auger, the shoe conveyor. We'll go right on the, right onto the, uh, get loader. okay sorry about that my bad you can kind of see the, sh the gates open right now there's really uh three hydraulic controls you got one for this gate up and down one to raise and lower your chute and we actually have it in series that way when you actually lower your chute after it lowers it basically spins this motor and turns it so like i said the pto is what actually stir spins the auger and mixes up your uh your ration but it also kicks it out right here when your augers are spinning, so. Sweet. Ow. I uh, forgot to turn you guys on when I just did this last one. One more, I think, though. I think. You just said get it down to 3,000. That's about 300 a scoop or so. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. So I, he's just putting that on there and then we'll uh, put a bale on there. I really don't like bringing hay, you know, all the way, all the way back up north because we have a crap ton of hay up there that's just wasted fuel. But we want to have something on the feed that way it uh, doesn't blow away. So I just shut the gate, raise the uh, chute up, spill a little bit, but not too bad. And now we'll, uh, now we'll kill it. This tractor was built in uh, 1975, I believe. It's on its second motor, second cab, and it probably has 3,000 plus frame hours on it. Plus, I mean, geez, if not even close to four or five, sorry, 30,000, if not closer to 40 or 50,000. Because you think about it, this tractor gets a minimum two hours a day. And if it's done, oh my goodness, I just about died. And if it does, uh, we'll just say two hours a day to be generous. Actually, three hours a day to be generous. Three hours times 25 years. And like I said, I think it's been close to 40 years since we've had this tractor. I think we bought it new. 
but let's just do the math real quick. So that thing is 49 years old, that tractor is. If it uh, runs three hours a day, that's 53,000 hours on that frame, which like I said, takes some days away for it being down or whatnot. 40,000 hours is probably a pretty good guess for the, on that frame. So now we'll go ahead and unwrap this bale, stick the bale on and call it good. You kind of see that uh, skid loader has some new shoes. Got new tires on that unit. So now I'll unwrap it and we'll uh, stick it on here. Oh, sorry, I got to yapping with Nathan, but you can kind of see we got the bale on, got the feet on. Now I'll take my time just kicking tires, making sure everything's looking good. And now we will uh, head to north to Bellevue. There we are. So we used to put us that much feed in there, but also put two or three bales. But we actually had a cow pass away because of that. Well, not necessarily because of that, but because uh, this trailer is a little different than uh, our uh, our older ones. The older ones have like a V in there. That way you can stick feed in there and the hay. The cows obviously eat the feed first because that's the freshest. But you they can do that without getting their head pinched. Well, this one's a flat surface. Easier to clean out, but uh, a lot harder to, uh, you know, this it could potentially build an air cavity because if you... Uh, have feed as your base and then have hay on top of that. Well, they're gonna eat the feed first, then you have a cavity. Potentially, uh, cows will get be eaten under there and all of a sudden the hay shifts and boom, the next caught actually happened to one of our cows. So we learned it just sucks that we had to learn that. Oh well. Just pulling up to the farm, made the 45 minute drive back. Usually takes about 20, 25, but when you're only going 30, 35 mile an hour, you know, it takes twice the amount of time. So the cows look like they're all down in the field. We got some hay bales out here for them. And as soon as they see me coming in, boy, oh boy, are they gonna be sprinting. I just am hoping I can uh, have enough room to get this thing turned around. We did, like I said, we do have at least a foot to foot and a half of snow on the ground right now. My dad did have to come out here and blade quite a bit. So at least we got that done. So hopefully I can get in here, get out, get in here, get it turned around and get out. Oh, that gate is just in the wrong spot. They know what's going on. Hi ladies. So remember the yellow tags are mine, like that one is my 16. That one's orange tags are Pat, greens are my mom and dad's. So there should be about six of mine in here. Well, I don't even know, 30 Pats, 20 my dad, something like that. We have roughly 55 cows in here. So you can kind of see if we didn't have this bladed, I would not be able to make it back here. There's my number nine. Hopefully you ladies are nice and pregnant. That's the hope. The real thing is, can I get turned around? I don't know where to go. I think I gotta go off in here. Come on, ladies. Get out of the way. That's all I was hope afraid of. Halfway getting there. Oh, <sighs> yep. I think that's gonna be as about as good as I'm gonna get. Hi, ladies. Number two, number thirteen. What are you gals doing? They are gonna go crazy for this. You're really gonna stare me down while you're peeing 11? Jeez. Got hung up right here, so I couldn't make it all the way, but I got close. So I'll just do a quick walk on of these gals, make sure everything's looking good. I do have the gates open, but uh, these gals are going for food, so not that bad of a deal. Looks like 16's got a bad motor, and whatever that one's got a bad motor. Yeah, it looks like 16's back right hoof. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm just guessing by how much it's kind of lifting up on it. Looking for stuff like that, making sure everything's looking good, everything's eating. So again, all these moms should be about seven months pregnant at this point, hopefully six to seven. Yeah, maybe five to six. Basically, uh, cows have the same gestation period as humans, if not a little bit 
a little bit sooner. So we usually like to get them, you know, turn the bowl loose on them around that, I don't know, time frame, summer time frame, June, May, June, July time frame. And that way we're, we target them to start having babies in March. So that's kind of the goal. That's the cycle here. Cause as you guys know, in this area, we do have some valleys like this. We have some hilltop farms. We cannot farm everything in between. If we didn't have cattle, we'd be leaving two thirds of the ground go to waste. Well, cattle, they're regenerative. They, you know, take advantage of the ground. It wouldn't just be lying there, nothing happening to it. You know, we're actually able to make a profit. It's sustainable. You know, having cattle and ground keeps ground from getting overgrown. It's just good all around. So that's what we're doing here. And we enjoy it. We enjoy being cattle farmers. So just walk around, making sure everything's looking good. Oh, you gotta watch out when she's got her babies around. She's a good mother, but not very good to any of us. So these gals are gonna go eat. They got plenty of food. Like I said, we bring one of those carts down about every five, six days, you know, get plus or minus a couple days, just when it, uh, depending on the weather. So when dad also gives them quite a bit of hay. So we like to keep them fed. We didn't have all the snow, they'd be out kind of picking, looking for corn kernels that we lost. There's not a lot of them, because you know it's a red combine, they don't lose a whole lot. You guys can't see me wink through the sunglasses. But, so yeah, cows are looking good. These are all the cows that are up in Bellevue. Normally we have about 15 pairs south the pasture and about 35 to 40 in the, uh, in the north pasture, but you know, they need water to survive. They need two things, food and water shelter they can find just about anywhere but we really they can get water there's a creek running through there so they can get water really at any time the creek is what keeps the water or the water movement keeps it open right now anything stagnant is eh, it's froze over that's why we can't have any cows in the north pasture because they just rely on three ponds that we dug well there's no water movement in there so they just uh that freezes over so we either have cows here or we have to take them somewhere else and like i said we like to keep them on the fields because again you know, combines aren't perfect, they do lose some. So cow, cows are a great way to kind of come through and clean up, just make using the most out of our corn crop, as well as just about anything else. Like I said, we have very marginal ground. They can eat up the pasture. They eat up the hay of stuff we don't want to row crop. It's just kind of all, all good things, guys, all good things. So I don't talk a lot about the cattle on, on our channel. I don't have a, I don't do a lot with the cattle on my cha on the channel, just mainly because I'm not around near as much. I'm really needed in the grain operation, just because, like I said, that's that's where you need the most people. You know, cattle chores, it's a constant job. It's not a cyclical job. You know, we need about three to four hours a day to dedicate to cattle. Whereas row crops, there's hardly any, hardly any need right now other than hauling grain, but come springtime, there's gonna be need about every day. So it's very cyclical, up and down. That's why I mainly do the row crops. So therefore it's much easier to put on the channel. So. So anyway, I am going to go ahead and uh, return my dad's truck. Try not to get stuck as I get out of here. There we go. <laughs> it's like a sheet of ice. Quite literally is a sheet of ice. These guys have seen me fall once and almost fall multiple times, but, but anyway, so I'm gonna head back, return my dad's truck, go ref a couple more basketball games. I was actually up here helping volunteering at a little kids tournament. It's just something good, all the good to give back to the local community. They generate a lot of, a lot of income for local businesses as teams from out of town come over here and spend money at local businesses. So it's always good to give back guys. And in the Christmas season, like I said, make sure you're donating to your churches, all your local organizations that rely on people's help. I know. I'm sure just like you guys, we are all fortunate. I know I'm fortunate to have all the blessings that I currently have. So like I said, it's, you know, working at deer, working on my family farm. It's just, it's always good to give back to your community guys, give back to those less fortunate. So there's gonna be a couple more videos popping up. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I am gonna be going to a uh, National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky again this year. Should be able to spot me if you guys do spot me. Really just by any point, if you guys see me, feel free to go say hi. But as, uh, as always guys, if you are interested in anything, anything that we do, anything that we do on the farm, drop a comment down below. I am hopefully going to be putting together a video of how my farm it did for the first year for my financial performance. Cause as you guys know, I did purchase a farm about 11 months ago. So this was my first full crop year, paying my own inputs, 
reaping my own profit. I actually have sold some of my grain, but not a whole lot. So more to come there, guys. And as always, uh, like I said, drop a comment. I always appreciate interacting with you guys. Like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartung Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, that's top for now.